The Miami Hurricanes are about to start their third week of spring football practices. Which players need to step up the most this week? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I am Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus and longtime South Florida sports radio vet. Thank you to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. I want to talk on this episode about some powerful fan reactions to Miami moving the spring game this year to a very small venue on campus and what that means for a lot of the fans. I want to talk about the players in my mind are the five most crucial players for team success this year, but Guys, since we're heading into such an important third week of spring football, and it's important because we've seen some trends developing over the first two weeks. It's a long way to go, but we're getting a clearer idea on who's standing out in certain position battles. So there are some players that I feel need to make up some ground there, and also some guys who play at critical position groups that Miami needs to see improve or replace important players that have gone on to the NFL or into the transfer portal. So uh, a player that I'm going to be looking at closely in week three that I I think could use uh, a big week, and he's played well, but he's got to continue to do that and be very consistent out there, is Jakari Brown at quarterback. And I see consistent improvement from Brown, and he's done really well. But the reason why I say Brown needs to have a big week is that Reese Poffenbarger, who just transferred in from Albany, has been playing exceptionally well in the first two weeks of spring so far and typically has been working in front of Brown on the depth chart, or at least it seems that way. And I say that because things in spring football are not always as they appear, but it seems like Poffenbarger has been pretty consistently the number two behind Cam Ward. So um, I know, again, neither Brown nor Poffenbarger are expected to start because Ward has been as good or better than advertised so far. He's Miami's starting quarterback, but I still do think whoever wins that number two job, that's an important benchmark and an important milestone. And I'd like to see continued competition between Poffenbarger and Brown. And since Poffenbarger seems to be the guy with the slight lead right now, I want to see Jakari Brown, if he can get right back into that race. And Emery Williams is also doing really well. But I think Emery, who's, you know, he just worked his way back from a broken arm. And I expect him to redshirt this coming year. So he's also doing well. But I think the primary competition for number two quarterback is between Reese Poffenbarger and Jakari. And since uh, Poffenbarger seems to have the lead right now, let's see if Brown can pass him this week. And, you know, each week gets a little bit bigger because the pads are on now. The physicality is going to continue to increase throughout these practices, so the cream is going to be rising to the top, my friends. You know, a position where uh, I'd really like to see some players step up in week three uh, is cornerback. Such an important position for Miami so far. Daryl Porter Jr., who is Miami's top cover guy last year, he's been practicing very well. I think a guy who's really already been stepping up is Jadis Richard, who's in his second year after transferring over from Vanderbilt, but I'd like to see more guys really step up and compete there. And that's a position Miami could really use some quality depth this year. So players I'm looking for a big third week from, Demetrius Freeney, Damari Brown, and Robert Stafford especially. Now, in the case of Brown and Stafford, we didn't see either of them the first week because they were working their way back from minor injuries. So we haven't seen as much of them so far in spring. Uh, But they've got opportunities and both. Brown and Stafford were part of that highly touted class of 2023. They're heading into their second seasons. This is really important. And I think a lot of people sleep on Stafford. And, you know, a lot of people with Damari, they they think this year could be an opportunity for him to break into the starting lineup. And I, I could say Stafford has an opportunity there as well. So I'd like to see those cornerbacks step up. Safety is another big one. 
Uh, because again, you've got you've got a massive void to fill when you talk about losing Cam Kitchens and James Williams to the NFL. Uh, and I'm really looking for and hoping for a big third week from safeties like Jaden Harris and Savion Riley. And I'll throw Markeith Williams in there as well, because these these are among the contenders to help fill the shoes that Kinchins and Williams are leaving behind. Now, uh, also how well these younger players do could determine what role Mish Powell is going to play. Mish Powell, who's looked very good, veteran, transferred in from Washington, was a national runner-up last year, played a lot of important games last season for the Huskies. He's looked really good, but uh, you know he he might. He might play uh, nickel or he could play safety if needed. And, you know, listen, so far uh, I've been pretty impressed with a guy like Jaden Harris and Savion Riley as well has had some important reps. You know, Jaden Harris, he was the understudy the last couple of years for Cam Kenshins, and I know he works very hard. We had a chance to talk to him in a media session last week. So I want to see he and Riley really continue to practice well because, you know, I think we may take for granted how much production we're losing from the safety positions I, I know that you know James Williams wasn't always that consistent but what a freaking football player and you know Cam Kinchins was the heart and soul of the team for the last couple of years so these guys have big shoes to fill defensive tackles that I would like to see have a big third week uh, I'm looking at guys who are heading into their their third year and their second year respectively Ahmad Moten and Josh Horton I'd like to see them have big weeks coming up because they represent the future at the defensive tackle position and on that defensive line. You know, my, Miami's got some some vets there. C.J. Clark transferred in. Marley Cook, Jared Harrison Hunt's getting a lot of reps. You know, Reuben Bain can play inside and outside. He can play all over. Uh, but Ahmad Moten and Josh Horton, who both they both look the part. They're over 300 pounds. They're big, powerful guys. Uh, they need to really step up because these are the guys that are going to need to bridge that gap and be great at Miami until even younger guys like Justin Scott, Artavius Jones, and Armando Blunt, who are all incoming true freshmen, until those guys are ready to dominate, we need third and second year guys like Ahmad Moten and Josh Horton to, to fill that role, and hopefully they can have a big week coming up. A couple of other spots and players I want to see have a big third week. Cam McCormick, he's working his way back from injury, the ninth-year tight end. You know, he missed uh, he missed the, the first week of practice, was limited in the second week, just started practicing in week two uh, because, yes, Miami's tight. This is important for him because Miami's tight end room has gotten a lot more competitive so far in spring, right? Because Elijah Arroyo looks healthy. Riley Williams is playing well. Elijah Lofton, the true freshman, has been one of the best stories of spring football so far. So, you know, if, if Cam McCormick is not careful, he's, he's going to lose a lot of playing time with the way that these younger guys are stepping up. So this is an important week of practice for him. Um, there's a couple of running backs who I think this week is really important for this third week. Trevante Citizen, uh, he's done well so far, but he needs to keep rising to the occasion now that pads are on because of what this guy is coming back from. You know, he wears a, a big knee brace. He missed the last two seasons because of knee injuries. He's healthy now, but he's trying to shake off some rust after not playing for two years. And I, I imagine there's probably some psychological hurdles he's got to clear as well. So I'd like to see a, a big week, another big week for Trevante Citizen. Chris Johnson is another one who uh, he's been getting most of the first team reps. I mean, with Henry Parrish transferring Miami uh, from Miami, I should say, and with, with Mark Fletcher and A.J. Allen not being available for spring due to injury, Chris Johnson has stepped up. I want to see him have another big week. And veteran receivers like Michael Redding and Shamar Kirk, they need to have a big third week because they've got these young players like Ray Ray Joseph, JoJo Trader, and Nye Carr really stepping up and breathing down, down these dudes' necks. Uh, they're looking to take all their playing time away. So we need to have uh, some, and obviously, you know, older receivers like Restrepo and, and Jacoby George are probably going to start this year. But for, for guys like Redding and Shamar Kirk, like if, if they're not careful, they're going to they're gonna lose spots to some of these younger guys who are coming up and young and hungry. So somebody, somebody was asking me, uh, and I, I think the same guy asked me this every season, who are the five most important players to Miami's success this year? Now, obviously, if you're trying to win an ACC championship and trying to compete for a national championship, you need more than five players to step up. But who are the most important five? Who have got to live up to the hype this year 
to be cornerstone players to help Miami reach their goals this season. And I, I would imagine their goals are, you know, more wins than last year, hopefully double digit wins and, you know, competing for championships and all that stuff. Who are the five most important players to getting there? You know what you want to do, my friends? We're only getting started. You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And my friends, I know you are keeping it locked to Nissan and that amazing lineup, guys. And man, with these brackets, this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Because each week we're picking a team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Michigan State Spartans can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after knocking off Mississippi State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Many questioned if they deserved a spot in the big dance, and they find themselves dancing into the second round. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And we are also brought to you by the amazing folks at FanDuel. You talk about enjoying the NCAA tournament. When you're getting action on FanDuel, it just makes it that much better. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big game, uh, an upset, uh, or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut those nets down. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube and we're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So Miami is going to have their third week of spring practice starting tomorrow. It starts on Tuesday in the indoor practice facility in the Green Tree practice field. Uh, I did. I got a question last week that I didn't get a chance to answer on our Q&A episode about like, uh, how much of practice they do inside versus outside. I, I think it's roughly half and half. Um, they really pamper the media because the media viewing portion is always during the inside. So I, I get to stand in the air conditioning, which is fantastic. But they, they do go outside at certain points. And sometimes they'll rotate certain units will go outside while others are practicing inside. So uh, I think they do it uh, about half and half. And obviously, Having the indoor facility, if it is raining and it's bad weather outside, you're, you're able to keep practicing and not have to, you know, interrupt or cancel practices the way you had to do in the old days. So they, they do inside and uh, outside work. I'm not sure what the exact ratio is, but I think it's like probably around 50-50 or maybe 60-40 inside versus outside, something like that. Um, you know, I, I talked uh, last uh, Friday about – players that are improving their stock so far in spring practice. Like I just gave you the guys who I think need to continue improving their stock this year. But I talked last Friday about players who are improving their stock, like pleasant surprises, guys we didn't expect necessarily to be practicing so well. And I brought up players like Bobby Pruitt, the true freshman linebacker who everyone's talking about. Jadis Richard, I talk about him a lot, really stepping up at cornerback. Uh, Lewis Cristobal Jr. and Samson Okunlola are competing for the starting left guard job right now. Robbie Washington, who's playing both ways in practice, he's getting work at cornerback and receiver. He was recruited as a receiver. Thomas Gore, who's in his second year at defensive tackle for Miami, transferred over from Georgia State last year. Caleb Spencer, the second year formerly safety, who's now uh, moved to the star position, and Malik Bryant, second-year linebacker who's now playing more at edge. So the, these were some of the guys that I mentioned who are improving their stock in practice. I wanted to revisit this because I think there are some other names that I left out, and if ever I leave out a name, it makes you guys think, oh, that guy must not be doing well. Like, oh, D Dono didn't mention this guy or that guy. Are they not practicing well? Uh, let me mention some others who are who I think are exceeding expectations. Zaquan Patterson, true freshman, early enrollee at safety. Zaquan is playing pretty well. And you know what? I, I talked earlier. I talked earlier at, about players who are, you know, competing to fill the shoes of Cam Kinchins and James Williams. Yeah, I mentioned Jaden Harris, Savion Riley, Marquette Williams. 
I shouldn't have left out Zaquan Patterson because just because number 20 is an early enrollee freshman doesn't mean that dog can't eat because Zaquan, who had a, just a, an exceptional high school career at Chaminade, uh, and he does a little bit of everything. I mean, that dude, is a, he, he's a rock star on special teams as well, and I think he can be that at Miami. I'm also not going to rule him out because, again, this is – this is his third week of spring football practice, period. He should still be in high school right now. I'm not going to rule out Zaquan for potentially competing for a starting spot or playing time because I'm that impressed by the young man. So I wanted to throw him a shout out as well. Bobby Washington. I mean, I talked about his twin, Robbie, doing well. Bobby Washington is also really doing well at linebacker. Markel Bell who's the JUCO transfer offensive lineman. He's been performing pretty well. I don't think he's going to start this year, but I think Markell can be an important backup tackle and rotational guy. Uh, I did mention Savion Riley and Jaden Harris are a couple doing well. And Chris Johnson at running back, I think is improving his stock out there and playing well. So though those were some names that I didn't mention. Anytime, again, if I leave anybody out, people are like, wait, does Dono not think Zaquan's any good or that Chris Johnson's not any good? No, no quite the contrary. These guys are, are improving their stock out there. So, you know, I, I, I was asked this question again this year. Which players are most crucial to Miami's success this season? That these guys all have to step up. I'm going to give you five of them. I, I, I know there's four corners, not five, but I mean, maybe if it's like a, what, a hexagon or something, like the, the five cornerstone players or the five most critical players, these are guys that, in my opinion, for Miami to compete for or achieve their goals in 2024, you need these players all to be exceptional and to live up to the hype. You're going to need more than five, right? You're going to need more than five to step up and play great. But if these players don't play great, I think you could be in for some trouble. And yes, the first name that I'm going to mention is Cam Ward. Transfer quarterback out of Washington State threw for 7,000, or sorry, three 7,000 would be a lot. 3,735 yards last year, 25 touchdowns, seven interceptions, scored a bunch of rushing touchdowns, manipulates the pocket, buys extra time. He can run, but that's not his bread and butter. Excellent passer. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, and there are high expectations on Cam Ward this year. And, and it's it's pressure coming from every direction, right? There is team pressure because I think Miami does feel that he can take them farther than Tyler Van Dyke did. Um, and Miami does have expectations this year to compete for an ACC championship. So there are team expectations. And then it's also such an important year for Cam Ward as an individual. And I know that the team success is always the first priority, and with team success can come individual success, but he's trying to improve his NFL draft stock. He believes he can be a first-round NFL pick, and in order to achieve that, you've got to go out there and and help Miami create success this year. So uh, there's a lot of pressure and high expectations for Ward. He's the most important, you know, most important player on the field is usually the quarterback. He's got to live up to that for Miami to achieve their goals this year. So he's the first one. Reuben Bain is another one I'm going to mention because when Reuben Bain is on, you'd be hard pressed to find more than maybe one or two defensive linemen in the entire country who are more valuable than Hurricane Bain. And Hurricane Bain, I know how hard this young man works, who as a true freshman last year was Miami's co-leader in sacks at seven and a half, and he led every freshman defensive lineman in the country in every important statistical category last year. He's got the bullseye on his back now. The secret is out. Opposing offenses will be scheming against Hurricane Bain. So he's got to have to keep working as hard as he's been and even harder in order to continue and sustain the sort of success that he had last year. And, and Bain, the opportunities that he has to just wreak havoc against opposing offenses, make quarterbacks' lives miserable, and just blow up plays the way that he does so well. For Miami to enjoy success, I believe Bain has to be a big part of that this year. Xavier Restrepo is another one that I look at. Now, I, I know every time I bring him up in this sort of a category, people will kind of bring up the flip side, and they'll say, well, Donna, we, we already know that Restrepo is a potential number one target. Like, we actually need others to step up because uh, we already know what we're getting in Restrepo. But I, I, I will respectfully disagree with that angle because Xavier Restrepo, to me, is a proven difference maker 
Um, he is just a tireless worker when it comes to perfecting his route running and his athleticism is insane. Uh, and he's just been so, you know, outside of the times he was injured a couple of years ago, he's just been so consistent as a performer out there. And I, I believe Restrepo, he can build the same sort of chemistry or even more so on the field than what he had with Tyler Van Dyke. And Restrepo, to me, um, when, when he's on, Miami's offense can also be on. So I'm going to look at him uh, as a cornerstone, and I expect him to have a big year. A um, couple of guys, uh, well, a guy on the other side of the football, let me go to the defense over here. I did mention his name already today. Mish Powell, the transfer defensive back from Washington. I think he can provide so much stability through his experience and his leadership in that defensive backfield. Uh, this guy, he's seen everything. He's played in the most important games you could play in, conference championship, national semifinal, played in a national championship game. Even if his team didn't win that game, he had some big moments in a lot of big games last year, had a, a game-saving pick six in a game that Washington almost lost last year. So uh, I think Mish Powell, to me, is this is – uh, I think going to be one of the most important transfer portal additions that Miami has made. And I think this guy is going to be critical for success. And then to me, another one, and by the way, you guys can feel free to argue. If I didn't pick a player you think is a cornerstone and someone who must step up for Miami to succeed this year, let me know in the comments below. If you're watching us on YouTube, Locked on Canes, or you want to send us a tweet or an X post at Locked on Canes. If you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Let me, let me know what I got wrong or who I left out. But my fifth guy I'm going to bring up is Jalen Rivers uh, because he, to me, uh, you know, not only is he protecting the quarterback's blind side as the starting left tackle, uh, Jalen is, you know, alongside Zach Carpenter, but Carpenter hasn't been here. Jalen is. He, he's, you know, your, your senior most offensive lineman. He's a proven team leader from the past couple of years. He's a very vocal, important voice in the locker room, uh, and he can set the tone for that entire offensive line. So Jalen Rivers is my fifth selection here. I go with Cam Ward, Ruben Hurricane Bain, the X-Man Xavier Restrepo, transfer defensive back Mish Powell, and starting left tackle Jalen Rivers. If you disagree or you want to add anybody in there, let me know at Locked on Canes. You know, I, I was uh, I, I was moved by a, a video that um, a guy who I, I, I know I don't work with him, but I consider him kind of a, a colleague and I enjoy his content, Coach Hayes, who's got an awesome YouTube channel. And Coach Hayes made a, a pretty passionate post on what Miami's doing with their spring game this year. Want to talk about that, my friends, when we come back. You want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I'm certainly not done yet when it comes to LinkedIn jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs help has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They have a vast variety of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn, LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this Monday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So the third week of spring football practice starts tomorrow. The spring game is coming up on April 13th. And we've talked about it on the show. You should be aware of this by now. Uh, they're going to be holding the spring game on campus at Miami this year. And they're holding it at Cobb Stadium, which is the track and field and women's soccer stadium on campus. But here's the thing, like you use the, the term stadium very loosely because the permanent bleacher at Cobb only holds roughly 500 people. 
They're going to increase the capacity a little bit. I don't know the exact number. They're going to move temporary bleachers in. So I don't know if that's going to double or maybe triple the capacity. But there are a lot of upset people out there who realize that, hey, it may be very difficult and in some cases impossible for a quote unquote regular fan to attend the spring game live. That if you're a local who wants to go in person to watch Cam Ward and Ruben Bain and company, that you may not be able to get a ticket and you might be forced to watch it on ESPN Plus or ACC Network Extra streaming on a, on a device at home or online somewhere. Uh, and so the, the way that they're distributing this, like obviously there, there are going to be spectators there. Um, some folks have already reached out to me that they've received emails for this, that they're, they're, they're issuing tickets to, um, hurricane club members who are people who, you know, donate money to the athletic department and season ticket holders that season ticket holders and hurricane club members have already received offers to get tickets. They're, they're going to be allowing access to a certain number of students. And then uh, I think depending on how many, Hurricane Club members RSVP and maybe some who don't, they they will have some other means of ticket distribution. But there's a lot of passionate folks out there. And Coach Hayes, Coach Hayes did, I encourage you to check out his channel. He's a great guy and a great football mind. Uh, but he's also a Miami fan at the end of the day. And he put out a passionate video about, you know, just how disappointed he is that that Miami, they're not making this accessible to everyone. OK, um, and this is one of the more exciting springs Miami's had because, again, Cam Ward brings a lot of rightful hype and expectation to this program. But I, I thought Coach Hayes made a great point that they're they're limiting this capacity so much uh, that, you know, and because some people will counter and say, like, the Florida State fans are going to be in my comments like they wouldn't even get 500 people. Miami spring football, they can't draw flies out there. Nobody shows up. Nobody. And yes, the last couple of years at Drive Pink Stadium, a lot, a lot of empty seats out there. It's spring foot. It's a glorified practice. I get it. But Coach Hayes' point was great that if the argument is, well, hardly anyone shows up anyway, uh, his counter argument was, well, there are faithful fans. You know, that number is, you know, I don't know, a few thousand, 10,000 faithful fans who do show up to spring games every year, faithful fans. Why are you punishing the faithful for the sins of the unfaithful, for the people who don't show up? So it seems a little unfair and it seems a little, uh, a, a little exclusive, a little too exclusive, but you know, guys, um, I don't I don't know the exact underlying reasons why. I don't know if there were conflicts or reasons why Miami couldn't go back to Drive Pink Stadium. I'm not sure what Inter Miami's home schedule is like uh, in April. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure what the underlying reasons are, but uh, I, I can I can make a promise to you that uh, I'm gonna help you guys. Um, first of all, I, I want your voices to be heard on this. So we'll talk more about this before the spring game. If you leave us a comment below on our YouTube channel or at locked on canes on X, you can follow us there. I do want you guys' voices to be heard. And I'd love, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And, you know, I, I know some of you have told me, Hey, no biggie. I was going to watch it on TV anyway. Others are like, well, I want to make sure I can go. I'll, I'll tell you the people that I worry about the most. The people I worry about the most are the people who are such diehards that you come down from other cities or other states just to see the spring game. And maybe you're not sure if you'll be able to get in now. So it's like if you like I, I met some folks last year from Tennessee and from North Carolina who just came down for the spring game. And if you know, if you live someplace else and, and may, maybe you're not a Hurricane Club member, maybe you are the people that I met last year. But if you're not, how do you plan a trip if you don't know for sure if you can get in for that? So. I feel for you. I do. And and obviously, from where I sit, uh, I'm going to give you guys as much comprehensive coverage as possible. You know, I'll, I'll be out there at the spring game and I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be your eyes and ears. And I, I know that that's, you know, maybe some people would rather be looking at Cam Ward's face than mine talking about the spring game. But I, I will give you guys as much hopefully quality content as I possibly can. But listen, again, I, I don't know. I don't know the exact reasons for, for why they moved it onto campus, but I know there's a lot of disappointed people out there and I, I respect you guys. I really do. Cause I understand if you were maybe planning April 13th, that's when the spring game is. If you were planning around going to that game and now you're not sure if you'll even be able to get in. Um, you know, I feel like Miami football, this is something coach Hayes said, Miami football really belongs to the community that it was, you know, the, the entire community that made Canes football so great 
in the 1980s when Howard Schnellenberger built that fence around the state of Miami. And I, I don't want you guys to be shut out. So we will talk to you again next time. Guys, I will uh, I will not be back until Friday. And I apologize, but I every now and then I take vacations. It's my son's spring break. So I'm going to take some time off in the middle of the week. I will talk to you guys again on Friday. And uh, if you want to complain about me not being here, go ahead and do that in the comments below. But we will talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.